Welcome to the Savage Productions YouTube channel. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Savage Productions YouTube channel. This is a very special video because this is my first video after hitting 1,000 subscribers. Hey Dad, we hit 1,000 hey. subscribers. What? Yeah. We hit 1,000 subscribers. Are you shitting? No. Finally? No. <laughs> because of me. Probably, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, guys, thank you so much for subscribing. This is a good milestone for us to have here. So anyway, guys, uh, for the 1,000 subscriber special, I've been promising you all in a bunch of different videos that I'm going to go over the build sheet for the 331 Fox body that I had, uh, or the 331 build that I had that made 470 horsepower to the wheels, uh, 425 torque, something like that. Um, I still have the car. It's currently covered up. Um, it's kind of on the back burner as we get some of these other projects wrapped up here in the shop. We got a lot of stuff going on and a lot of people <laughs> still wanting to, to get their stuff done. We got lots of projects out there. I'll, uh, I'll go out there real quick and show you all what's going on. But yeah, this is the, the Fox body up under here that made the power. And if you don't know, uh, we are doing a 363 cubic inch build on it right now. Uh, we have the engine. Uh, it's actually at my house sitting under my dining room table. We have it needed, we need to put it in. And um, that's basically going to be it. We made a lot of progress on this car. We'll be getting this thing running here soon. We want to get this red car done first. Uh, this is more of a long-term project here. Much longer term than any of the other cars that we have in here. But we're going to get it done first, and then that way we can actually use this lift for my car. So that's the plan. But let me go ahead and just tell you what's going on with the rest of these projects, and then we'll get to the build sheet. So this project that we're working on right now has been a pretty long one. A lot longer than what we wanted. Uh, we just ran into a lot of issues, a bunch of small things like the caliper brackets being on the opposite sides, the bolts for a K-member not being in, uh, just a bunch of stuff being mismatched and sourced from different places and not having the bolts for it and all that stuff. Um, the guy, the owner does have fenders for it and the front bumper cover and everything. He just hasn't put them on yet because we're doing a complete build on it. If you uh, want to see what the top of the engine looks like, check out this video right here and uh, you can see that but we're making really good progress here the shop is really messy right now because of all the tires and stuff from this car but we're also we're actually putting these guys on them right here which those are going on the rear those are like 10 and a half inch 11 inch wide wheels going on the back it looks freaking awesome uh, those slicks are going to be going on dad's car if you don't know dad has a 2012 uh, mustang gt that is pro-charged and if all this coronavirus crap goes away soon, we'll plan on getting that thing to the track sometime this year. Uh, hopefully dipping it maybe into the nines. What do you think? Stock bottom end, stock sealed motor <laughs> yeah, into the nines. It, it, it ran the mile an hour for the nines. Yeah, it just needs just, traction. It, just a 60 foot. We haven't been able to get the 60 foot down um, because of the, uh, the, the tires we were using were just wore out. Yeah. So those actually are um, some stiff wall slicks. Yeah, these are stiff wall slicks. They actually Maybe came. Something. They actually came from uh, our buddy Billy over on Street Racing Channel. Yeah. We we bought it from somebody who Billy sold these to. So thanks, Billy, for <laughs> for these tires. Yeah, they're used. So we're gonna put them on there for a little while. Yeah. So we can have some fun with them. Well, they're they're used because freaking Billy only makes like three passes or something with them and has to throw them away because his freaking truck makes too much power. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, guys, if you didn't know, this is our shop, Savage Performance. Uh, we have a lot of Mustangs in here right now, but we work on, you know, mainly domestic V8s, a lot of Mustangs, uh, but we also have a Camaro out there, which is actually getting this 416 cubic inch engine in it right here. Uh, we've had a, a a Whipple supercharged Challenger RT in here, or SRT, recently. We did some a uh, little bit of work on. We've got lots of stuff coming into the shop in the next few weeks, so if you want to see any of that, I'll be covering it here on the YouTube channel, and just stay tuned. You'll be able to watch a bunch of those projects. This particular car is getting a uh, turbo build. What is a big single? We haven't really decided we're going to go to a, a, a single or a twin. He wants to do twins, so... Right, um, but it's going to get the 4.6 liter uh, modular boss block, and... Uh, more videos coming on this very soon so this gt500 has been in the shop before uh, we did a little bit of fuel system upgrades on it before and now we're going to be putting some bigger tires on the back because it definitely needs them um, it also needs it for the traction because this 
freaking car is making probably about 650, 700. It's here for a built rear end. Uh, we're gonna take the housing and get it welded up at 10 Soldier Race Cars, uh, put a set of gears in it. Uh, obviously, like I said, new tires and probably an aluminum drive shaft. And then this truck is a 78 model, uh, one of the the old school builds. It's got a little bit of uh, of wear for the years that it's been built, but I think the owner's gonna kind of rebuild it. It has a uh, 351 Windsor in it, and we're gonna be putting our top end package on it, along with some other goodies. So probably gonna be a video coming on this guy as well. And then this is the Camaro that we're putting 416 in. The front bumper's off of it because uh, owner had a little mishap and kind of ran into something in his garage. So we got we got new stuff going on this thing. As soon as the engine gets put in there, that way we don't have to worry about you know, messing up the uh, body panels and stuff. So anyway, let's get to the thing you've all been waiting for for a long time now, and that's the 331 build sheet. All right, guys, so I'm going to go over this build sheet now. Uh, this build sheet, the list will actually be linked in the bottom of the description here, just if you want to look at the part numbers. Um, I'm, it's not going to have the interchangeable information that I'm going to talk about here. So the part numbers here are, are partially vetted. Um, we have a customer who's actually replicating this build right now, and we have seen where some of the part numbers weren't the exact ones that we had ordered before uh, because he was very careful when he was looking at it for instance like the msd distributor that we have was for an old school um, small block ford whereas the one that we actually had was uh, for my kind of car so he you know double checked with us and said hey is this the actual part number and we looked it up and sure enough it wasn't so um, the build sheet that i had personally created myself was not 100 percent accurate to the part number but this is just going to outline um, what I had the part numbers that I think that they are but if you are going to be buying any of these things just so you know double check the part numbers make sure that they fit the engine that we're talking about here uh, which is a you know stock 302 um, the 5.0 HO motor that uh, goes with my Fox bodies with that being said let's get into the build sheet here so um, first things first the entire system was was tuned on a Mott's quarter horse. Um, we bought the actual quarter horse uh, programmable chip that you can put in it yourself and then do your own tuning. Um, but if you get if you find a tuner who can program with the Mott's a quarter horse chip, then all you have to buy is like a seventy five dollar chip. Yeah, it's like seventy five bucks. I actually bought like the five hundred dollar tuner or tuning uh, capability, and I had to put it into my um, and my computer and all that stuff you really don't have to do that if you're going to be getting it tuned um, so that's from Mott's you'll see that in the uh, build sheet here and then the 331 stroker kit that we bought um, they may not actually make this particular one anymore the one that we bought has dual fly cuts uh, five valve reliefs on the pistons um, one to fit the conventional head and then another to fit the trick flow style twisted wedge head and um, we bought those because we weren't really sure which head style we were going to go with and that was also on sale because i think that they were kind of trying to get them out of there um, but just make sure that whatever stroker kit that you get matches the heads that you're going to plan on getting um, so speaking of that the heads that i got i'm skipping down here to what you'll see is number 12 on the list uh, I had the TrickFlow 11R190cc heads, um, and let me just tell you, those heads, they flow amazing for what they are. Uh, they're pretty cheap, um, $854 a piece assembled for the ones that I got. Um, they also have, you know, an upgraded style where it's like CNC, race port, and all that stuff. Um, the car probably would have benefited from that, but we just went with the uh, street port that we had. And uh, that part number I know is right, right there. So highly recommend those heads. Um, you could substitute it if you're going for a conventional style pistons. You should could substitute it for like an AFR 205 or something like that. Uh, the Renegade series is really good. Um, I'm putting 225 Renegades on my uh, 363 here. So um, I recommend those as well. So then back up to line six here. Um, just some SFI balancer. We had the Summit one. Um, it was pretty cheap, but we also had to get that crank pulley spacer that you see there. We had to get that just so it so it spaces out properly. So then that leads us to the flywheel. The opposite side has to be the 28 ounce imbalance, um, and I have that part number listed there. I opted not to go with like a super lightweight aluminum flywheel, um, 
just because it's not it's not like 100% applicable to a real racing scenario. Um, you know, it's good for, for quickly spinning it up and all that stuff, but a lot of the clutches that you'll get, which I don't have any of the, the clutch or the uh, suspension or anything like my like transmission and all that stuff that I have listed here, I'll talk about that later. Um, but anything like that, it's I personally think it's better to just have more of a, a strong SFI flywheel um, and then just have the rest of your components be lightweight. So then we have the Lunati Voodoo Cam Kit. Um, a lot of people have been asking what part number this is. And the uh, 20350712L, I believe, is the name of the cam. And then K at the end of it means that it's the full kit. So we did degree that cam in, retarded at 4 degrees on the crank side. You'll see that on the notes as well. Uh, and the reason why we did that was because the cam is made for a stock 302. It's supposed to rev up to about 6,800 RPM. But with it being a 331, it's going to just eat up all that air. So we uh, degreed it to where we can bring that RPM range up even higher. On a 302, the, um, the range would probably be up where somewhere around like 7,200 or something like that. And what we saw once we got it tuned and degreed in, um, it was pretty much plateauing at about 65. And um, my actual dyno graph just kind of hit at 6,500 and, and carried even. So it didn't really drop off. And um, we're actually thinking now after the fact that that might have been um, the computer itself because the computers really aren't, aren't even supposed to rev above like 6250. Uh, so once you get it tuned and you can go above like 6500 or something like that, that's when they really start kind of uh, giving up. <laughs> so it could have been that. It also could have been some valve float, but we don't really know. Um, it just we it worked for us. If you if you're curious, we rev that that engine to about 7000 RPM, um, and like I said on the it revved there, it just, the power level, once it got to 65, it basically stuck all the way to 7. So when I was really trying to, to run it hard, um, it was I was shifting at about, about 7,000 RPM. Um, a lot of times shifting, you know, racing people on the street, if I, if I didn't need to uh, shift that high, I'd shift about 66, something like that, just right after that little peak. Um, so then also we have the comp cams timing set, um, you know, just make sure that whatever one that you get has those keyways so you can retard the timing. Uh, I already talked about the Triflow 11R190s. So then the um, our intake setup, we had the Edelbrock Victor EFI intake. And that intake, um, it's actually really good for pushing a whole lot of air through it um, on one of those EFI setups. So an alternative to that would be like the, uh, the Trickflow track heat intake. They, they flow about the same numbers. Um, I still recommend the Elderbrock Victor EFI. Oh, another thing I didn't mention is we are a trick flow dealer here. And honestly, any of these parts, if you want them and you want to support us, you can call and order it through us. You'll get it at at least the retail value, if not some a, a little bit cheaper, and we can just drop ship it directly to you. Um, so if you wanted to support us, you know, give us a call and do that. All the information for our shop is in the video description below. Especially for the stuff that we're a dealer on, we might be able to get you a much better deal. Uh, than what you can find elsewhere. So I did use the Elderbrock Victor EFI intake. Um, I had an intake spacer on it, and there's the link to the spacer. Um, even if you're going to be using like the track heat or something like that, we recommend putting a spacer in there just to get that intake up above the engine to where those intake temps can be a little bit lower because of the heat. And also it makes it longer runners, which means that you can have, uh, it flows a little bit higher RPM. Um, so then we had the AccuFab 80 millimeter two inch throttle body spacer. So another thing that you could do if you really wanted to is put a Nitrous Express integrated solenoid uh, in between there. This is the two inch wide and it just basically takes up, takes up that entire space. Um, I am sponsored by them. Uh, we were going to put this on my car, but we're actually going to be putting something different on. So stay tuned. Um, this is the 90 millimeter variant. They also have different inserts that go in here. And uh, I think the I think the Elderbrock Victor EFI has a 75 millimeter opening, and they just have an insert that goes 75 millimeter. So this will take up your space in between your uh, your throttle body, and it's going to make for a nice clean install with the integrated solenoids. And actually, I'm going to be selling this one. So if you're interested, let me know. Okay, I was just reading. It's 80 millimeter, not 75 millimeter. Uh, so anyway, the Holly 80 millimeter throttle body. Um, that you know you can pretty pretty much use any 80 millimeter throttle body that you want. Um, the Anderson 4-inch power pipe. Now that thing, that is an absolute godsend. Let me, I actually have it right here. Let me pull it out. So this is one of probably the most important 
aspects to this build because uh, you can have that engine with you know be able to accept all the air possible but without something to actually hold all that air getting it into the engine it's going to be wasted so the anderson four inch power pipe highly recommend this it does go through the inner fender well um, so we had to drill mine because we put the smooth panels in it not entirely sure if you have to drill yours i think it might be made to go in the stock location because uh, there is a stock hole there so just have it go through there um, put the put the mass air on the inside with the uh, air filter and everything and that'll really make it work okay so dad actually just reminded me um, they do come in two different variants there's the four inch variant which will definitely require you to drill a hole um, or a bigger hole in your stock inner fender well um, and then there's also a three and a half inch variant if you didn't want to you know go that hard the three and a half inch variant which we actually put on another build which i'll link right there we just had to grind open the existing hole just a little bit to actually fit it through there uh, nothing that you couldn't do which is like a little dremel tool so if you didn't want to you know mess up the inner fender well that much more because it's going to be harder to drill a hole when there's not a smooth surface to put that like the big hole saw through because there's already a small opening in there it's gonna be a little bit harder, um, but if you you know want to make the power, then I'd say do the four inch. Uh, so we also had the CNL 80 millimeter mass air, um, and it was calibrated for 36 to 38 pound injectors. Um, I have the, all the fuel system listed at the bottom here. I'll get to that in a minute. So the CNL 80 millimeter mass air, uh, the way that it works is that it actually uses the stock um, the stock mass air meter, and just the, the tube itself has an insert for a sampling tube, and then the sampling tube pulls the stock sensor into believing whatever size calibrated injectors are in there. Uh, so it also kind of self-corrects. So that's going to be a lot better for drivability, even if you have um, a tune on it. But um, Dad informed me that the CNL 80 millimeter mass there, you actually can't even really get that anymore. I think maybe CNL went out of business, or you just can't find it or whatever. Um, but the one that we've been putting on some of our projects here at the shop uh, has been the, eight, the Pro M 80 millimeter mass air. Um, that one's you're just paying for the sensor and the tube, so it's a little bit more money, unfortunately. But um, you know that's what you can do. Uh, and then we just had the, the Spectra four inch uh, inside diameter air, air filter that we mounted inside of the uh, fender, and you can find that at you know O'Reilly's or whatever. I picked the red one, but it doesn't matter because it's going in, in the fender. So this is what we had here. Just make sure you keep that clean every now and then. For this build, you are going to need a taller trick flow valve covers, and I actually just realized I skipped over the trick flow 1.6 roller rockers. Um, the 1.6s are, all right, make sure you get the 7.16 stud variant. Um, but with all of that, you're going to need the taller valve covers. Um, and then there's more information about like the gaskets and all that stuff down below. So for push rods, we couldn't find the uh, receipt that we had. Um, for the push rods but i'd say the best thing to do is just get one of those adjustable push rod length and then watch our video on how to adjust push rods which will be linked right there and then just figure out exactly how long of a push rod you'll need um if i'm remembering correctly i think it was exactly seven inches that might be wrong um but i think it was seven inches so as far as our oiling system goes uh, we went with the canton oil pan 15 620 s um you can go with something different but just so you know the oil pan that we went with, it didn't clear the um, the stock K-member 100%. We did have to notch probably like an inch off of where the, the front of it comes um, over there. So if you didn't want to do that, which, I mean, it was really easy to do. It just, it kind of sucked that we had to do that. Um, we did notch it an inch. If you don't want to do that, you can get a different oil pan. Just make sure that you get the matching dipstick tube and all that stuff. Um, the one that we had... I had the crank scraper on there and we actually had to shave down the crank scraper a little bit because of the stroker kit uh, and then we had a canton main girdle which was a big a big help for keeping that thing together for as long as it was which i mean it was still technically together besides the thrust bearing that's what went out in it um, we, when we took it out but uh had the main girdle in there uh, we also had a windage tray which that was pretty helpful uh you know with keeping the keeping the oil off of the crank uh, we also had a can of oil pickup, um, ARP oil pump drive shaft, which is just the rod that drives the uh, oil pump, and then the melling oil pump. So the M68A is the standard volume high pressure. Uh, that's what we were recommended to, to use it for, and um, it actually worked really well. Uh, I also had some underdrive pulleys on there. I actually don't really recommend putting the underdrive pulleys on. At this power level, it's really not going to make that much of a difference, and I actually had problems with my car running hot. 
and I'm going to attribute some of that to the underdrive pulleys themselves. So on this next build, I'm probably not even going to put the underdrive pulleys back on. Probably put just stock stock stuff. So getting into the Spark, um, I had Taylor 409 plug wires. Um, those things were pretty awesome. They're really big, thick plug wires. Um, the part number that I have on there is blue, but you can get whatever color that you want. Um, they also had the Taylor clamp, clamp kit for those plug wires. We bought two of them just so we had plenty to put, you know, make it real nice along um, all the way around. And I got the red ones, so it was kind of mismatched on there, which was good. It went with the rest of my, my engine. But again, you can get whatever color you want. Um, just highly recommend those plug wires. Uh, we also had the MSD programmable box on there, um, which it was the uh, MSD 6AL2. That thing was pretty cool because it gave us a three-step, which was the max RPM, the launch rev limiter, and a burnout rev limiter. Uh, and I just wired it, those into different switches inside of the car. So I would go up and be able to do my burnout. I'd have the burnout rev limiter on. And then after the burnout, I have to turn it off. Uh, I made that mistake not turning it off a couple times. And then uh, the launch control rev limiter you put on, and then you, I had it activated on a button on the shifter. And then as soon as I let go of the clutch, I let go of the button on the shifter, and then that released the launch control rev limiter. And then I could go through my gears with the max, um, the max limiter, or not launch control limiter, but launch RPM limiter. So with, with the programmable 6AL uh, box, you have to have a computer to be able to do it. Um, I found out that better than just the old school, you know, little chips insert that you had to do. Um, but of course, I'm a tech guy, so uh, that might not be as simple for somebody else, but you can very easily just use um, the non-programmable box. We also use the, the time and retard features of that, uh, which you can do it off of the launch control once it's deactivated. Um, we use that sometimes to kind of help us get traction off of the hole. So if I let go of the button um, and I, you know, map the gas, if I'm losing a lot of traction, I'll pull timing for like the first quarter of a second. Um, and then that might help it, help me get traction once I get going. And then the timing will ramp back in to whatever I set it as. So it's kind of cheap tuning on a naturally aspirated setup. Um, of course, if you have like a turbo or something like that, you could really do the same thing. I mean, unless you're using just uh, some kind of aftermarket software. Um, that probably has all that stuff built into it. Uh, we also had the MSD distributor. So that is the correct part number now. Um, it was the wrong one at first, but we fixed that. Um, I also had an MSD coil, which we mounted on the car. It's not the Fox body style. That's just a regular MSD coil. We mounted that on the end fender well. Um, you could get really any coil though. There's a, there's a nice MSD coil that we're actually putting on this uh, green car in here that um, should work just as good. Um, for spark plugs, just straight up Autolite 3924s. You don't really have to spend more money than, than that on the spark plugs because for this build, it's, uh, that's just really, that's all you need. Um, and then we had Excel 36 pound injectors. Of course, just get whatever injectors match your mass air meter. Um, and then for the fuel system here, or the rest of the fuel system, we had a custom fuel system that we ran on it um, using the PTFE line. We use the dash eight AN as the feed and the dash six as the return. Um, of course, all the fittings that come with that, I didn't put any of those on here because that's just all, you know, you're gonna have to figure that out on your own. Um, you also could get the right red and blue anodized like I had, or you can get black or just red or whatever, whatever, you know, your style is. Um, <clears throat> but we just got those from Summit. We did find out, however, um, if you get Summit brand PTFE line, get the Summit brand fittings because we tried the Summit line with um, a, a different fitting and it wasn't 100% accurate with the size. So I don't know if that's Summit being off or if that's the other fitting being off or whatever. Just make sure that if you get Summit, <laughs> get the Summit brand fittings. That's the only tip I can give you there. And then we just attached that to the frame rails of the car um, up underneath the car using those little clamps that kind of look like this with this part being rubber and then this part being uh, where you can put a bolt through or a uh, pot rivet. We did that all throughout just to mount that. So we did put the Walboro 255 liter per hour fuel pump in there. Um, and then the Summit fuel filter, we chose the red one, which I actually have right here. This one's not going back on any car because we had it sitting out uh, in the shop for too long or in, in my garage for too long and uh, probably has some stuff in it. So. So it's going to be more of a memento than anything, but this thing was pretty cheap and worked really well. Um, and then everything else that I have there is just the um, different head bolts and um, gaskets and all that kind of stuff that we used. So you all can just kind of 
look look on the sheet for that i don't really have to go over that but yeah that's about that about wraps it up um i'll go ahead and tell you the rest of the build from the engine back um, was a g-force built t5 transmission um, i had the 294 first gear option which i would say probably kind of hurt us more than helped us in the long run um, stock gear option probably would be a little bit better just with the power level that it was making just the 60 foot it 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 was kind of too aggressive off of the 60 foot. Um, I mean, we also didn't really know a whole lot of what we were doing with the suspension stuff. The suspension tuning was kind of new to us back then. So maybe the 294 first gear would have really benefited us if we knew what we were doing. Um, but you know, that's what we're, that's what we go back to the track for every time we learn. So had the G-Force built transmission, um, 294 first gear. They were the fly cut gears. Um, they also have a special mix for the transmission fluid that they want you to run as long as well with an additive um, that worked really well. Oh, the um, the so the clutch. Okay, listen to me very 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 carefully. Use a spec stage one clutch. Okay, don't even try any other brand. <laughs> the spec stage one clutch for this particular build is all that you need. It's very very streetable clutch. Racing it on the track, you'll get you know no slippage whatsoever. The thing were like four four hundred foot pounds of torque. I made four twenty five to the wheels, and the thing never slipped once. I had went through two different brands of clutches trying to get it to work. Um, I had one clutch that was supposed to be able to handle like five hundred foot pounds of torque, and it slipped at the track. Like after one run, it was done. It started slipping once it got hot. Um, another brand, same exact thing. So. I was really starting to give up on that, almost ready to put it on automatic in it, even at that power level. And um, the spec clutch is, I, we heard from, it was actually from the NMRA races. Um, the guys who are running the Coyote stock classes, which is the stock sealed Coyote motor, when they launch from the line at like 8,000 RPM, and they freaking run like low nines when their car's all stripped out, and it's just a completely stock NA motor, that's what they run. They run a spec stage one clutch, and they replace it halfway through the season. Um, I actually didn't ever, I never had to replace that clutch. I don't run my car that much at the track, or I didn't at least. I ran it a good bit. It probably had over 200 passes and 5,000 street miles on it. Um, and you know, I only, I never even had to replace it. So those guys go through and they beat the crap out of the car. They, they replace them just to be more competitive. But the one I had, it lasted amazingly. So highly, highly recommend them. I'm actually putting a, a uh, super twin disc into my uh, 363 build. Um, so then after that, I just had a, uh, an aluminum drive shaft, big thick aluminum drive shaft. Um, I had 410 gears in the rear end with a full spool. It was all braced and everything uh, with UPR bracing and had the axle tubes welded. It was, it was uh, pretty much battle ready. And then I just had lightweight wheels on it. Uh, I did have frame connectors on the car and, you know, torque box reinforcement kit and all that kind of stuff. So there was some money in the car, had good suspension. Um, a lot of that's still in the car. A lot of it's going to be utilized in uh, the next build. And um, really looking forward to that. So if you all are also looking forward to that, please hit the subscribe button. And again, thank you all so much for a thousand subscribers. I'm not gonna say I didn't think that we'd get this far. I just, I'm glad that we have finally gotten here. So here's to the next 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, whatever. If y'all like what you see, stick around, you know, hit the subscribe button, like this video. Um, we'll have plenty of projects coming here at the shop. Uh, going to be releasing a whole lot of videos here soon, as much as I can possibly record. Uh, Dad's also going to be doing some recording while I'm not here. So we're going to try to get a lot of content out to you guys and uh, hope that you all can learn something because lots of times when we're recording, you know, Dad's just a fountain of knowledge. So um, you might be able to even learn something from our videos. But besides all the builds that we're doing in the shop, we're also going to be building our personal cars and racing them at the track. Um, going to the track and everything once all this coronavirus stuff is over with uh, We really look forward to that and we want to take you all there with us. So thank you all so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this build sheet So feel free to give us a call if you all are building um, this particular engine and you wanted to learn um, Or know a couple more things about it specifics, you know, just uh, just call us let us know um, We really prefer if you do that that you order some parts from us or something like that just so it makes our time worthwhile we have some people calling to just kind of dream and discuss builds and stuff like that, but we don't have the time to really spend on that because we got a lot of projects here. The more time that we can spend on the projects, the more content we can get out to you guys. We do want to be a source of information, 
uh, because of the specialties that we have, or spe more specifically the specialty that he has, or the knowledge that he has, um, and we want to be able to help you guys out. Uh, just got to be a little bit of something in it for us, you know what I'm saying? Again, we are a parts dealer. We can get you what you need. We can recommend lots of stuff too. So all that information for the shop is linked down below in the description. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Um, I control really the Instagram. Dad posts a lot of stuff to the Facebook page. Uh, you know, we'll try to keep keep those pretty active. Um, the Instagram page is also kind of this YouTube channel's Instagram page. So I hope that you follow that and just kind of keep up with whatever I'm posting on there. Again, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you again for a thousand subscribers. And that's going to be it for this video. Sorry it ran on so long, but I really wanted to just kind of discuss the build sheet in, um, in detail here. So I hope that that's what you all have been asking for. Um, I'm going to link this at the end of the 331. And if you actually haven't seen that, uh, click the link at the end of the video and uh, you'll see that. Looking forward to the 363 build. Super excited to get that running. But for now, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.